Amen. Amen. I found the answer. And I've learned to pray. And this is a time for prayer. As we go through a perilous time where there is much unbelief. A lot of people not leaning on our Heavenly Father. But I'm here to tell you this morning that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And He answers prayer. Oh, yes. All right. And until we get closer, with a closer relationship with God, we're going to go through things. Mm -hmm. Until we understand that we are weak and He is mine, we're going to go through these things. What we're going through is not by accident. God is trying to let us know that he is still on the throne. And if you want any of your situations and problems taken care of, as the song said, you best learn to pray. Call on Jesus. He's there to hear your concerns. On our prayer list, we're going to pray for McGowan, Bertha Brown, Kevin Taylor, David, Bolcom, Cheryl Smith. On our sick and short end, we have Curly Ware, Lula McGowan, Mary Mills, John Michael Brown. Dog the chain. We, and we also like to acknowledge Christian Washington family, Christy Evans family. We also like to acknowledge those who have died because of this pandemic. I know a lot of times we don't understand why God does what He does, but He's gone. Everything is in his hand. You may not understand as a human being, but I'm so glad that God knows everything. Word of God says the Son that He knows our our lying down and our getting up. He's omnipresent. He's with us all the way, all the time, everywhere. He's a good God. And everything is in his hand. Mm -hmm. I come to realize now as a child of God that it's not about us or you or me, mm -hmm. but it's about the will of God. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to strengthen us, lead us in times like these. For he is God. He's on the throne, and he's in control. Let us bow our heads. Merciful Father, we just thank you for another day. We thank you that you touched us this morning, and we'll roll the song brand new day. We're going to rejoice in the heaven of God and us. You allow us, Heavenly Father, to experience your blessings. We thank you, Lord, that we are still in our right mind. We thank you that we are in reasonable heaven. We thank you, Lord, that we have a roof over our heads. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can say thank you, Lord. Because you're my good God. As we go this morning, Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless my heart and their families. Watch over these families that's represented in my heart. We're going through many things. You know what we're going through, Heavenly Father. So we call on you this morning, Heavenly Father. 
to touch our lives in these men. Watch over those who are on our prayer list. Our sick and shut in, our believe. Watch over Pat and the Lord as she recovers from her surgery. Watch over those who lost somebody at the home. Comfort them and let them know that, that you care. That you understand what we're going through. You realize something, Father, that we'll be without a body. So we, we call on you this morning, Heavenly Father. But you are Heavenly Father. There you go, we go through the battle of shadow and death, Heavenly Father. You told us that you'll be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Heavenly Father, we're dependent on you because we believe you, Heavenly Father, because you're a God that cannot lie. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Thank you. That leads and guides each and every one of us. Continue to keep us, Heavenly Father, as we go about our daily business. Watch over our young people, Heavenly Father, who are going to die our days, killing one another, not knowing, Heavenly Father, that life is precious, given by you. That's a special prayer for our pastor. Why he's away this morning. As he proclaimed the word of God. That's that you watch over the one who's going to bring the word, Heavenly Father. We need a word right now, Heavenly Father. We need strength. We need guidance, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, that's a special prayer for those who are in our belief. Father, in everything but your word, Facebook, Instagram, those things that are made, Heavenly Father. Touch them right now, let them know that it's the word of God, Heavenly Father, that's going to save us. Not under unbelief. And now, Lord, as we go today, continue to keep your loving arms around us. Continue to let us encourage one another. To call on your Heavenly Father. To proclaim your name that you're King of Kings. Lord, Lord. If anybody's going to bring us through these prayers, it's you, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We call on, we call on the nurse. The only one that is able to save us, that's Jesus. Jesus. We acknowledge you. We glorify your name, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for being able to come to the house of the Lord. The day is out, glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Where we can find strength. Where we can find comfort. Relief, deliverance. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Asking in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
right here is God asking that you continue to cover and keep everyone that is underneath the sound of my voice right now. Yes, Lord. Those that are here in person, those that are viewing on Facebook, those that are going to view later. God, whatever platform that they use to hear your word, God, let them receive it right where they are. God, we pray that yokes will be destroyed, that bonds will be loose, God, that the captain will be set free, so that we can stand on your word and proclaim Jesus and a lost and dying world. God, we ask right now that you just have your way, God, that you forgive us of our sins, God, that you wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Father, I ask now that you hide me behind the cross. God, let the people not see me, but let them see you. God, let them not hear me, but let them hear from you this day, for if there are any who don't know you for the remission and pardon of their sins, they will cry, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Yes, and Father, we pray and ask that everything that is said and done is done decent and in order, so that you receive all of the glory and honor that is due unto you. Yes. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, let every heart say, Amen. 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 And amen. You may be seated. I would like to speak to you from a simple topic this morning. Is the middle word in life? If the middle word in life. Now, all of us in here and that are watching can spell. Even our little children are able to recognize letters and sing the alphabet song. So they are able to put certain letters together to make words. And if all of us can look at the word life, we know that between the L and the E, there's an if. Mm -hmm. How many of us have found ourselves wondering what if from time to time? Mm -hmm. This is not something that we do to, 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 to second guess or to question uh, God's decision, but this is something that we do as human beings internally when we feel that we haven't used all of the information that was presented to us to make a sound decision. Mm -hmm. I, we, I, I can hear somebody saying, if I would have done something a little bit different, yeah. I wouldn't be where I am right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can hear somebody say, if I, if I would have just budgeted my money a little bit better, yeah. I wouldn't have to struggle financially. I, I, I hear somebody say, man, if I, if I didn't make that bad decision, yeah. I wouldn't have got caught up when I was out there in the streets. Yeah. If, if, if I can give just a little bit of help, I'll be able to make it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can hear my parents tell me sometimes that, boy, if, if you're always worried about if what you should have, could have, would have done, you'll never realize what it is you can do. Yeah. If the middle word in life. If I would have just listened to mama and dad when they told me not to deal with that no good man or that, that no good woman, I wouldn't have gotten in that bad relationship. Yeah. Come on, yeah. If yeah. the middle word in life. And then you have one of the most famous if sayings that we have all said <laughs> at one point or another. Come on, doctor. God, if you get me out of this. Yes, sir. Come on. Oh, God, if you get me out of it. I promise I won't do it no more. All of us have told that lie because as soon as God got us out of whatever mess it was we were in, we went right back to doing what we did because yeah. that's what we wanted to do. Yeah. When we take an honest look at it and take an honest look at ourselves, we will realize that the ifs in our life are selfish. A lot of our ifs are driven by personal goals and desires and not by the will of God. You see, our ifs have everything to do with us and absolutely nothing to do with serving God. Yeah. You see, understand that the if involves a system that has been set in place by the world. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm sure y'all have heard of this and this has become a buzz phrase over the last couple of years, but quid pro quo. Yeah. A this for that. Mm -hmm. If you do this for me. I will do that for you. Yeah. You see, oftentimes, church, we misunderstand this type of dynamic when it comes to dealing with God. But Solomon here in our text was dealing with a quid pro quo prayer to God. Mm -hmm. You see, over in the sixth chapter, he asked God if a 
about 12 times. Yes, he did. You on? He, he kept coming to God, if this, and if that, and if this, and if that. And God saw fit to answer his if with some ifs of his own. Yeah. You see, church, we need to make our ifs more about God and less about ourselves because it, 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 we need to understand that if we can just make it into God's presence, he will give us what we need. If, if, if we can just hold out a little bit longer, God will see us through. Uh, as, the, as the old saying goes, as the old saying used to say, if I just hold my peace mm -hmm. and let the Lord fight my battle, yeah. everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. uh, if the middle word in life, I hope I'm speaking to somebody this morning, if have been in life ever since we can remember. Oh, yeah. As a young crusader for Christ, we used to have close our sessions with our, our motto and our watchword and our prayer. And our motto says, once a crusader, always, always a crusader. crusader. Right. Our watchword was, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Right. And our closing prayer said, if one draws to God through praise and prayer, yeah. even half a cubic foot, God will go 20 leagues to meet him. If. Yeah. If you do what God has told yeah. you and called you and commanded for you to do, God will do some things for you. Okay. I tell you how God speaking directly to King Solomon. He's, as I said, he's answering Solomon's prayer. Church, we have to be ready because a lot of times when we pray to God, we may not be ready for God to answer us. That's right. That's right. That's right. You, you see, when we say we're ready, God will be like, okay, if you say you're ready, then you better be ready right now. Yeah. Because what's coming is coming, and it's coming hard and fast, just like a fastball from a major league pitcher, and you better be ready to step up to the plate and knock out the ball. Yeah. That's it. You, you see, Solomon asked God 12 ifs over in the sixth chapter. Go back and read it for yourself, because if I give it all to you, you won't get, get the end. You go back and look at your own stuff. That's all right, too. But let me help you out with that number 12, because that number 12 has some power and some significance in the Word of God. Now, in case you didn't know that the number 12 represents the day, because the day is divided into two equal parts. Mm -hmm. 12 hours for the day and 12 hours for the night. Mm -hmm. There are 12 months within a calendar year. All right, all right. The number 12 biblically is defined as a number that signifies perfection in government. Mm -hmm. There were 12 patriarchs in the Bible from Shem to Jacob. Yeah. There were 12 people anointed to serve in government from Aaron to the Jehoahaz. There are 12 tribes in Israel. Teach, mm -hmm. teach. Each of the 12 tribes have 12,000 names sealed in the book. Yeah. That's in Revelation the 7th chapter. Yes, sir. Come on. Jesus first appeared at the age of 12 in yes. the synagogue yes, sir. teaching to the elders. Yeah. Jesus had 12 disciples that followed him, and he called 13, which was uh, uh, Paul after Judas had betrayed him. Yeah. When Jesus was arrested, he said he could call his father to have 12,000 angels at his disposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. 12 legions of angels. Yeah. The New Jerusalem, the city that we all want to get to, it got 12 gates. 12 gates. The Bible tells us that the walls of the city got 12 foundations. The Bible teaches us that the tree in the midst of the city is going to bear 12 manner of fruit. Yes, sir. And just in case you miss it, and all that wasn't good enough for you, when you go to the grocery store to buy your eggs, they come in 12 as good. <laughs> yes, sir. If, the middle word, in life. Yeah. God is dealing with ifs right now. God is dealing with not only my ifs, he's dealing with your ifs. He's dealing with the ifs of the world because the world always wants to say, well, if God exists, he wouldn't allow this to happen. Come on. But what they fail to realize is that because God exists, he's allowing some things to happen so that way they can have a closer and a right relationship with him. Yeah. Second Chronicles seven fourteen, God said, if my people which are called by my name. Mm -hmm. That's going to bring me to my first point, church. God knows your if better than you do. Mm -hmm. Don't you know that God knows you better than you know yourself? Mm -hmm. How can we, the createe, tell the creator about us? Don't you know he knows everything about you? Everything, even the hand on your head, a number? God knows it all. 
Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Yeah. And before thy came and spoke out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Mm -hmm. God knows you. He knows you. God knows your if. So when we are dealing with issues that Solomon had brought before God in the sixth chapter, God is telling me, okay, Solomon, I know what you're asking for. I was paying attention when you was praying. And now that you ask me for these things, I'm going to answer you in accordance, in accordance with the same manner that you asked it for me. Mm. So if you want me to do this, you're going to have to follow my instructions, and I'll do this if you do that. Mm -hmm. See, understanding that when we pray to God, we got to make sure that we are honest with ourselves because we have to be honest with God. That's right. yeah. You can't come to God with a half prayer. Yeah. Can't do it. You can't pray in doubt. You can't sit there and ask God for something and, 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 and not be sure of what it is that you really want from God. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful for nothing, mm -hmm. but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your request be made known unto God. You see, when you come at God this way, He can come back at you in the in the like manner. Yeah. You see, you know what you need. You gotta know what you need. You gotta know what you really need, not what you want, but what you need when you come to God. God, God, I want a wife, or I want a husband, or I, I, I want a job. And God is saying, I, I, I give you these things, but you gotta be in alignment with my word. See, because if you ain't in alignment with my word, you won't go out and get it, and I ain't gonna take it from you. But it may not be what you, what you really need. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, ain't, ain't no lesson like a ball lesson. Yes, sir. You need that lesson that you go out and you got to pay for? Yeah. See, but if we really understand that God has already paid everything because our bodies are not our own, we've been bought with a price. Yeah. And the old game show used to come on television and say, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> the price is right. Yeah. And if you're willing to pay it this morning, yes, sir. God got to give this just for you. Yeah. You see, the problem today is we ask God for stuff, but we're not willing to keep the requirements that God has set in place for us to achieve. Mm -hmm. right. James 4 and 3 says, You ask and receive not because you ask a minute mm -hmm. that you may consume it upon your lust. Mm -hmm. You can't ask God for something in the middle of doing it wrong. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God, I pray these bullets don't, don't hit me. Why are you out there shooting at folks? Yeah. <laughs> Robbing folks. Uh -huh. God, I, 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 I pray that don't nobody find out. Why, the middle, why are you in the middle of telling a lie? Mm -hmm. That don't work together. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I heard somebody say, that's plan and strike. That don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. You can't serve God on your terms. That's what we miss that. We want to put God, we want to put God on our clock, our calendar. We want to put God on our on our playing field. And God is telling us, you got to come up a little bit higher to receive what it is I have for you. Yeah. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. If you constantly rely on you, you're going to come up short every time. Yeah. You're going to miss the mark. Yeah. But if I trust God more than I trust myself. The ifs in my life are already answered because God has given me his son, Jesus Christ. And because God loved us so much, not only did he give us Jesus, Jesus said, I'm going to give you a comfort. Uh -huh. All y'all know how it is when we get cold and get lonely, we want to snuggle up under a blanket. Uh -huh. I'll go get the comfort because I, I, I'm, I'm in the bed and I'm too lazy to get up and turn on the heat. So I need something that's going to make me feel a little bit more secure. Uh -huh. Jesus gave us that security in his Holy Spirit. If my people, God is laying claim to us. That's what he did. Because he said, my people. My, my people. Yeah. You don't belong to you. Yeah. Stop thinking that you can do whatever it is you want to do with your body. Your body is not yours. Yeah. yeah. God made us. My people, what you call by my name, your name don't even matter. Right. It don't. <laughs> because you got a name that's going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. That ain't never been spoke before. Yes, sir. So you can't sit there and say, well, I'm so proud of this name. I, uh, you can't say nothing bad about my name. When at the end of the day, after you give up your, you don't give up your name before you give up your body. Yeah. You got to give it all up. God says, if my people, 
which are called by my name. God has chosen us. First Peter 2 and 9. You are a chosen generation. Mm -hmm. A royal priesthood and a holy nation, a peculiar people. people. Yes, sir. That you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. light. My people, my name, God chose us, God called us, we're a holy nation, we're a peculiar people. Peculiar means you ain't going to be what everybody else expects you to be. You're not going to do what everybody else thinks you should do. Because you are peculiar. They go, whenever you walk into a room or a situation, young ladies, young men, somebody should be able to look at you and say, oh, it's something different about him. Yeah. Oh, it's something special about her. Because the love of God is inside of you because if you let the light shine before me, your Father in heaven can be glorified. That's it. That's it. This is how we have life and not just live. Yeah. People get so caught up on living, they forget that there are aspects to life that go beyond just existence. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. If, the middle word in life, if, the middle word. That we we got to understand that the if is there if you want it. Mm. The if is there if you need it. Yeah. And the if is there if you're willing to accept it. Mm -hmm. What are your ifs? That's going to bring me to my second point, church. You need to know what your ifs are. In order for God to do something for you, you have to do something for God. Mm -hmm. God clearly lays it out here in the text. It's not something that I'm making up. I'm not trying to put say God is an extortionist, but God has requirements for us to receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, shall humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray. And seek my face. Mm -hmm. And turn from their wicked, wicked way. ways. Yeah. God laid out some specific requirements right there. Said, if you want me to do this, you need to do that. Uh -huh. Quick pro quo. This is that. God said, okay, if this, then that. You shall humble yourself. This is the that, y'all. Then you got to humble yourself and pray. You can't pray with a proud spirit. Yes, sir. This is why God put these two together. They shall humble themselves and pray. Then it says, seek my faith. You can't seek God with a proud look. Mm. The Bible says those who come under the seven things that he hates is a proud uh, look. Yeah. You can't look up on God with pride with a proud faith. That's what got Satan in trouble because he was proud. Yeah. Yeah. If, 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 we need to show some humility in the church. We need to show some humility in the world. Don't you know that, as, as my mama Betty Ruth used to tell me, the same people that you stepped on going up mm -hmm. is the same people that you're going to meet when you're coming back down. Yes, sir. Oh, you need to be humble because if God humble you, yeah. it's going to be public and it's going to be painful. Yeah. Oh, God, I, 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 I'm like I was when I was a little kid. Mom, give, me, give me my woman in the room. <laughs> Yes, I want somebody else to see me get whooped. Yeah, come on. Give me my woman at home. Don't whoop me in the grocery store. Yeah. Oh, but you got folks that are so proud for the day. God got to whoop them all up and down the internet. Mm. Whoop them all up and down on, uh, on cable television. Mm. Oh, they think they're so proud. Oh, I got to whoop you out of the office. <laughs> yes, sir. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my faith and turn from your wicked way. God didn't say we was wicked. He said we had wicked ways. Yeah, yeah. It's a difference. All of us got a little wickedness in us. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. All of us. We were born in the sin, shaken to the iniquity. This is us. This is the mold that we fit because we came from a natural birth. Jesus, who knew no sin, came from a spiritual birth. Yeah. That's how he was blameless. Oh, y'all don't mind me teaching this. Morning. Come on, teach me. We, we, we got to be able to understand that we have to be humble. We can't be like a Pharisee in the temple. Mm. Oh, God, I'm praying in the temple, and yeah. I'm so glad I ain't like, like that fellow. Yes, sir. There. Yes, sir. I'm glad I ain't like that tax collector. Uh -huh. Oh, we need to be more like the tax collector and less like the Pharisee. And, and don't even lift up our hand and just say, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can find that over in Luke 18. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to do anything in the church, but God, God has to humble us. God has to get us to a place where we can receive what it is he has for us. That's it. That's right. Humble yourself. If you humble yourself, God will elevate you. James 14, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. It didn't say he might lift you up. He shall lift you up. If the Bible says shall, you can take it to the bank. Yes, sir. Yeah. Guaranteed. 
and pray. If you pray God will, God will do something for you. James 5, 16. Confess your fault one to another. Pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, if you pray humbly, it will avail much. Yeah. yeah. Not that you're righteous, but because he made us righteous with his shed blood. Yeah. If you seek God's presence, God will work some things out in your life that you had no idea that you would even be able to get out of. Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. It ain't going to be added to your brother, your sister, your mom and dad. It's about to be added to you. Yeah. Because you got to come to God for yourself. Mm -hmm. If. If, if, Jesus said, whoever come after me, let him deny himself, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. For who shall save his life shall lose it, but who shall ever shall lose his life for my sake, and the gospel's sake, the same shall save it. There's that word life again. It's life in there. If you willing to forego the things of the world, you can receive the things of heaven, the things that are of eternity. God says, turn from the wicked ways. Turn. How do we turn from our wicked ways? 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yeah. Will, shall. Those are definite in the word of God. Those are maybe the hopes and promises. Those are definite. If, the middle word in life, that's going to bring me to my third and my final point. God answers ifs with his word. After God had answered Solomon simply and by, by giving him six ifs. Because Solomon asked 12, but God said, well, it ain't going to take all 12 for you to get back to you. I'm going to get <laughs> what, what, what you really need. Yeah. He said, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If you do what you're supposed to do in accordance with the word of God, God says he will heal, he will hear from heaven. He will forgive sin and he will heal the land. He will answer our ifs with a yes. Mm. But in order for us to get a yes from God, we have to have a yes in our spirit. Yes, Lord. See, oftentimes we have too much of a maybe and a might and a, and a probably in our spirit. We got to have a yes in our spirit. We got to be understanding that the ifs that are out there in life that the, the world try to use to confuse us, God has already give us, given us instructions on it. Right. Oh, we, we, we try to make plans and we try to come up with all these strategies and formulas of how we're going to be successful and how we're going to get ahead. But James 4, 13 through 15 says, go to now that you say, today or tomorrow we go into such a city and continue there a year by itself and get gain. Whereas you know what shall not be on the morrow. For what is your life that they were life again? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little while, for a little time, and then vanish away. For that he ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. There's that prayer for again. There's that this or that, that again. God is saying, if, if it's his will. You understand? When you're praying, Luke 6, 17, and Luke 17 and 6 says, The Lord said, If you had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, mm. you may say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Right. If. Right. Oh, we got to have faith when we come to God. We got to be just like the woman that reached out and touched the hem of his garden. Because what did she have in her spirit? Not only did she have an if in her spirit, but she had a yes in her spirit. But the Bible records in Matthew 9, 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Mm -hmm. Mark 7, 16, Jesus said, if any man has ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah. Oh, you can, we, we can have selective hearing if we want to. But God said, what is your if? How did your if Give life. Right, right. Once you get a yes in your spirit, once, once you get, get, get that, get that uh, God, I'm ready to serve. God, I'm ready to go forward. God, I'm ready to do just a little bit more. God says, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's what he said. Not just your part of the land. He said their land. That's plural. Their is plural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
We so worried about who, what state is red or blue or who's Democrat or Republican or who's white or black or who's brown or yellow. But God said, I want to heal everybody. Yeah. But because there's so much division amongst yourselves, you can't even hear what it is I have for you. Mm. If the middle word of life, God is trying to get us to a place where we can be more than what we are right now, but we have to confess our sins. The Bible teaches us, 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, there is if again, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Right. Not just the part that you want everybody to know about, right. but that secret sin, <laughs> yeah. that sin that don't nobody know about but you and God. Yeah. Whatever that is, that's between you and God. I ain't got nothing to do with it because we all got our problems. I got mine just like you got yours. I ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in, but just know that we got a God to serve. Right. And if we truly trust in God, yeah. if we understand that the middle word in life, Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. If you want life, come to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If you want more, come to Jesus. If you have needs, come to Jesus. Stop going to all these other folks and putting all your business on social media. Yes, social media is a, it, it is a tool, it's a platform that we're using to advance the kingdom, to spread the gospel because of the trying times that we're living in. But don't let your life revolve around what somebody posts about you on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or, 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 or Snapchat or whatever it is, the TikTok, whatever filter it is that you have. We need to filter out some of that foolishness and hear from God. Yes, sir. Oh, if you're tired, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Oh, if you're weak in your spirit, the Bible teaches us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Right. You're going to mount over wings of eagles. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and not faint. Yeah. Oh, if you're lost, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. If you are sick in your body today, the Bible teaches us in Isaiah 53, 5, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Mm -hmm. That's a spiritual healing. Don't get that confused with a physical healing. That's a spiritual healing. I make sure I clarify that because folks be like, oh, I, I'm going to call it things to be not as though they were. God is the only person that got power to call those things to be not as though, the, as though they were. You can't speak nothing into existence. God is the one that stepped out on nothing and created everything with the word. Amen. You ain't got that kind of power. Yes, sir. Come on. Let nobody prop a lie to you and tell you that they can and you can too. Yes, sir. God answered Solomon with six ifs. God answered us with six ifs. The same six ifs he answered Solomon with, he answered back over at 2 Chronicles. He gave Moses six ifs in Deuteronomy 28. He told him, he said, it shall come back that if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God. There's those ifs again. God, don't hear tell you, church, God ain't, God ain't reinventing the wheel. The way is already there. <laughs> yes, sir. The, the, the path is plain. It's already laid out before us because the Bible teaches us that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We got to be able to see past our ifs and see what it is God has for us so we can receive life. But you got to do some things that the Bible says, if you shall hearken unto the voice of, your, of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. then some good things are going to happen to you. Oh, we all familiar with the text. We're going to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed coming out. Above only and not the least. The head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. If we do the things that God has commanded us to do, if we hearken diligently into the voice of the Lord our God, but what people really tend to forget about is if you keep reading over in Deuteronomy 28, there's an if you don't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's some things that's going to happen. Yes, sir. Oh, we only want the good part. Oh, Come no, on. Let me get to the good stuff. Uh, I'm ready to have a good time right now. But you got to go through some things in order yeah. to be a better man, a better woman, a better child, a better servant of God. And God is trying to tell you that if you want to be more and have more life and have life and have it abundantly, you got to come unto me. Yeah. Don't you know the enemy is going to come in at you one way? But if you do what God tells you to do, the Bible says he will flee from you seven ways. If, if you do what God has called for you to do, you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
if, the middle word in life. Don't get caught up living where you forget about life. That's right. That's right. A lot of us are just feeling like we're just going through the motions right now because we've been isolated and secluded and we've been having to quarantine and we can't go out and do the things that we want to do or act how we used to act or be what we used to be. But God is saying, I'm trying to take some things away from you. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> So you can experience life to the fullest. It, it, it's just like a kid. If you do allow your kids to eat candy and, 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 and potato chips all day, they'll never know what it means to have a nutritious meal. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then when you try to give them a nutritious meal, they'll reject it mm -hmm. because they're so used to all the sweet and the sugary and the, and the, the so-called good stuff in life. Right. Oh, but if you give them some of uh, nature's candy, uh -huh. if you give them a little bit of fruit, Oh, that ain't going to help them get a little bit of uh, 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 nourishment to their body. Yeah. Oh, if, if you get a little bit of fruit, and I'm trying to talk to you because the Bible says in the, in the tree in the midst of there will be 12 men of fruit that is good for the healing of the nation. Oh, God, I want to get to that city so I can get some of that good fruit. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I ain't worried about worms and, and bugs messing it up because I'm in a place where there's no more sickness, there's no more disease, there's no more death. All we got to do is just, just, just walk around heaven and praise God all day long. Yeah. Every day is going to be like Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. All the Sabbath is on Saturday. That was the seventh day he rested. Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Mm. So if the Sabbath was set Saturday, according to the old Jewish calendar, that was the seventh day. That's right. Jesus rose on the first day, which was Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. The Holy Spirit came down on the first day of the week, which was Sunday, when God established the new church on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Teach. The brothers got together on the first day of the week when they met because they did this to honor Jesus' resurrection. So if you want to know why we come to church on Sunday, I'm here to tell you it ain't got nothing to do with the Roman son God Helio. It has everything to do with the son of God that shed his blood on Calvary yes, for your sins and mine and he rose early the third day morning. Yeah. If, if you understand what the word of God really says, you'll be able to be a better I'm not trying to beat nobody up anymore, but I'm trying to give you some encouragement. I'm trying to give you a little bit of understanding because when the Bible teaches us, when all of that get, get understanding. Yeah. yeah. Know that the enemy's coming. He's out there. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And the Bible says, if it's possible, even the very elect can be deceived. There's an if again. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you read the Bible, there's a lot of ifs in it, and it, 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 it's, it's so much there, but I'm going to go ahead and move on because I know y'all are ready to go watch the game, but I want you to know that we ain't playing no games in the church. Yeah. It's time out for foolish. What is your if? What is your life about? And does your life represent the things of God? Does your if have salvation in it? Does your if have prayer in it? Does your if have humility in it? Does your if have sacrifice in it? If it doesn't, it needs to. And today is just as good a day as any yes, to say, God, I want to get it right with you. Yes, the doors of the church are open. Yes, if there are any who don't know about Jesus, we're here to offer Christ to you today. We have to understand that life is full of ups and downs. Job said, man is born of one day, but few and full of trouble. We all want to experience something on this journey. But if we stand on the word of God, if we keep our hands in the master's hand, everything is going to be all right. Your if, your life, should have nothing to do with you, but it should reflect the things of God. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, mm -hmm. shall draw all men unto me. If you want life, Jesus gave you the invitation. When he died on Calvary, when he hung there, in the face of the earth, you 
up from the six to the ninth hour. When he hung his head in the locks of the show. Even then, the world was trying to mock him with an if. If you be the son of God, get down from the cross. Not only get yourself down, but get me down too. Oh, he's saying others, but he can't say himself. But he knew that he had a mission. Because in the garden, Jesus said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But not as I will, but as thou will. Jesus' is if lined up with the Father's will. Does your if line up with the will of God today? If the middle word in life. Jesus came so that we can have life and have it more fun. It is my prayer today that your life is a reflection of the God that you serve. And in doing so, you can experience him more on that day when he parts the clouds and comes back for his church without spotting him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us, oh God. God, we thank you for the word that came before us today. God, for their enemy that don't know you for the remission of part of their sin. God, let them call on the name of Jesus. The only name under heaven by which name can be saved. And God, we ask that you just empty us up ourselves and fill us up with your Holy Spirit. Allow us to do with me everything that your word calls for us to do with me. God, allow us now to think on things that are temporal, but things that are eternal. God, we know that we are just strangers passing through this land. God, we ask that you continue to guide and order our steps. Guide our tongue and our heart and our mind, oh God. God, so that we can just shed a little bit of light in this dark and dismal world. God, we pray for everyone that is sick, Heavenly Father, that is shut in. God, whatever their circumstances are, whatever their situation may be, God, we ask that you just touch them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, allow them to call on you in their darkest hour. God, knowing that you would reach out just like you did Peter when he stepped out the boat. And straightway, we will be saved. So God, we thank you right now. We love you, we praise you. And that you continue to just let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And God, we ask that you receive us unto you when you come back. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
and minds the Holy Communion. We ask that those of you at home that have your communion cups, that you have your juice and your cracker. Make sure that we are doing this in accordance with the scripture. For the Bible teaches us that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and bread and gave thanks. He said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. At the same time, he took the cup when he was up, saying, this cup is the new testament of my blood. This do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. At this time, I'm going to ask Deacon Hayden and Deacon Toe to bless the bread and bless the cup. Heavenly Father, we come right now. Thank you. Thank you for just allowing us to be take a part in this Holy Communion, Lord. We know that it's not because we've been good, Lord, but you kept us in our right mind, Lord. We want to come out to the house of worship, Lord. And right now, we, we know that we can't bless you, Lord, but we ask your blessing upon this prayer. We know it's not your broken body, Lord, but you said do this and remember for you, Lord. These prayers and blessings are all done in this prayer. Amen. 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 Lord, we know this cup is not your shed blood, but it's in 
remember that we share the blood that was given for the remission of sins. Take and drink. The Bible records after they had supped, they went out to the Mount of Olives and sang.